Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today is a pretty big topic and definitely going to spawn many different videos as we break this down further and further. But I want to get this one to really start and get the conversation going. We talk heavily about aiming and just everything far in between in the channel. There's, but there's always more to the equation and that's valuing your game sense and the difference it can make to actually improve your aim. The question you have to really ask yourself, how can you aim if you don't know what to aim for? or what to aim at. I'm gonna be real, if I could trade all my aim for the ultimate game sense, because I know that I'll be able to work on my aim and practice it mechanically. So this is just really highlight how important game sense is. We need aim to execute on a strategy though. There's no doubts about that. But if there's no strategy, then what is there to aim on? Everything is vital, so please remember how important your in-game knowledge has to be. For Friday's video, I actually uncovered a major bug that was definitely taking me out of the game. It was making me lack some of my game sense. It was an issue with my frame rate. You've heard me complain about it on stream. Even before I posted this even before I post this video for Friday. But overall we're discussing, yes, how valuable aim is and what are the components to create a strong game sense. You always hear the memes of all aim, no brain, or all they do is Kovacs. I want while you guys are here on the channel to see the massive benefit of looking at your aim holistically and not through the lens of only just aim training. Aim training is important. I have explained it that it's just building a strong foundation and a good safe place to test the waters. But like any sport, you really gotta play. You just really can't be in the gym all the time and expect fantastic results while playing football. So this is part of the equation that's very important is game sense. We're really gonna start to go in depth about game sense. So let's start with what is it? It's really a term coined by the gaming community to describe a player's predictive and deductive reasoning abilities. Kind of sounds like a Sherlock Holmes, to be honest. It is what we see pros in the scene do all the time when they clutch out insane plays. Perhaps you have better aim than a pro player. I've seen some people have insane aim, and I know you guys in the comment section or even watching this video do as well. But with your experience, your love of prediction is very much key. This involves your game sense of being in your environment, what you use to your advantage how you play cover, and how you can play in a really smart way. So how do you play in a smarter way? Well, some of those answers are, it's knowing how to minimize your hitbox, making it harder for your enemy to kill you, cut a corner, predict an enemy, push at the right moment, or retreat to fight an optimal positioning, and letting the enemy play into your hand, always having the odds in your favor, no matter how talented the other person is at aiming. This is a massively important because you can have only adequate aim, but it's what they do with their aim in their position that is really key to help them beat you. And you want to counteract that. One of the biggest tips is to really record and review what went wrong in each moment. We will break down very much like Apex Legends University, but further into concepts of techniques like movement, baiting, slicing the pie, cutting corners properly, when to cut them, and how to take an encounter. This is going to be different in very various video games and FPS shooters, but nonetheless, the concept of how you approach is very much the same, whether you do it with a lot of speed and momentum, or you take a fight slow and you wait for the other to make a mistake. Speed is really everything, and decision-making can be poor or correct or on the nose. The issue is with decisions is that some just don't make a decision, and they just freeze. You can even see it in recordings where an enemy or a person will freeze, and they're lacking game sense. Please understand that it is okay not to know what to do in a situation. If you play chess for the first time, if you played any sport, you're going to freeze and say, what is the rule? What do I do here? Where am I supposed to go? We all remember those moments when we first learned a sport and we're still trying to understand what somebody's going to do in what situation. As you continue to play that sport, you'll start to predict what your opponent is going to do, how they're going to dribble the ball, when they're going to do it. You'll be able to start to read techniques and understand it. It's why I want to bring these concepts to the table, but let this be the starting point today in what we build on. The first tip I can give everyone across the board, and I mentioned many times in my videos, to record your gameplay today and start reviewing. Even if you don't really know what you're looking for initially, look at the moment right before the end of the round and see what led to a mistake. Maybe what had you lose the round or perhaps your teammates weren't close enough. Maybe you weren't aware of a nade that spawned nearby. Maybe you could have taken optimal positioning. Maybe you ran in the open at somebody who you knew was low and you didn't need to push them in that moment. Perhaps somebody was getting a res and you just didn't push. 
there's a lot of things you can break down and ask yourself the question, when is it appropriate to push and when is it not? So we'll talk about this in various videos. I think that's another fantastic concept that we're going to cover is when to push and when not to push a gunfight or an encounter apex. I think for this Friday, we're going to go with the most simplest concept. Did you double peek? If so, why? Let us talk about that in our Friday video, the art of double peeking and juking and how you can bait an enemy and peek a corner. This is a mistake we see. I even make this mistake as well. You really feel overly confident with your aim and you have to realize with your aim that even if you feel super confident, it doesn't mean that playing into an enemy's hands is definitely, or any way, shape or form, useful. Let's say you peek a corner and there's a sniper there, you hit him, but he's still hard holding the angle, even though it's his mistake of hard holding, but now he has a jump having to wait for you to peek and potentially do a massive amount of damage to you. When you could simply maybe crouch around the corner, you can take a different angle, you can cut the corner fast and wide, or you can do it shorter. But the art of juking, we can talk about this in our Friday video. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and let us continue to break down all these amazing concepts together. We're still gonna cover aim, but I wanna make sure when you're playing that you have the whole picture, that you understand your equipment, your aim, the concepts, and that at least if you make a mistake, that you know what to do to improve from there. Again, I appreciate all of you guys for watching today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, like I mentioned before, like, subscribe, content, everything far in between. I look forward to seeing you guys in Friday's video, and I'll see you guys next time.